My name is uh, Chief Dr. Joseph Mabogu Egu. He's a chief of cabinet rank appointed by His Royal Majesty Abogudi Ubi Ufuku III, JP Ubi of Obio Kingdom. Once again, Obani Boy Festival for which Obio is well known is around the corner. Obani Boy Festival is one lunar moon period of commemoration of the survival of Umwezichima from the dreaded Aidu. Aidu was uh, a campaign organized by the Oba of Benin to bring back the runaway people from Benin led by Chima. 
according to tradition, this was around the 16th century. For political upheavals in Benin, Chima left Benin with a group of migrants and finally settled at Obio, which was founded in an earlier century by Obio, another Benin chieftain. On their arrival at Obio, uh, they staged a type of coup d'etat against the Obio Petraki and took over government from them. Chima became the leader because of his superior political knowledge, his personal charisma, and military prowess. Now, Oba was not happy about the movement of these people from Benin. So he organized a campaign to bring them back. Chima and his children were in trouble. Day and night, they were dreading this Bini campaign, which was organized by the Oba to bring them back. It lasted a very long time, as a result of which the children of Chima at Obio started to run away from Obio, leaving Obale, the heir to the throne of Chima. Onika fled, Olibo fled, all other of uh, Anaba fled, Ezi and all the nine villages that make up the present day uh, uh, the Chima clan. So when you mean uh, on a child, you know, in present day, many towns and uh, villages have changed their nomenclature. When you mean on a child, I would like to know whether it's present on a family or on a chubo or whichever. Well, uh, on a child is the present on a chubo who left and settled in the father's farmyard. And you mentioned Opale? Yes, Opale didn't leave. He remained with the parents at Obio because he was the heir to the throne of the father. Onichubu was the second son who fled to the farm. So what do you mean that uh, Opale is present, uh, presently Obio? Opale is the present Obio. And uh, Onicha uh, is the present Onichubu. The present on the family was founded by Oheze, who was uh, a grandson to Chima. Oheze was a son to Onicha. Uh, these people settled in their various uh, places. Now, when the Aidu was over, it was difficult for Chima to gather his children back. So Chima and his household went out with uh, instruments of music, the gong, the drum, the uh, what we call a bele, the air uh, pipe. They were and their gogo, they were dancing round the entire obio, calling on the fleeing children to come back so that they can enjoy the New Yam festival. From that time on, this festival that is now known as Obanibe started. It was in commemoration of the survival of Umweze Chima from the dreaded Aidu. It has nothing to do with any fetish something. It is a type of carnival, a period where people rejoice about their survival. This was exactly how uh, Obanibwe started. It became an annual ritual that every year we must do it. Uh, there is a, a story that there was one year which obvious people failed to do Obanibwe as a result of internal squabble. That was in 1952. A very remarkable thing happened. Very many young people died 
And as people went to find out exactly the cause of this, it was divined that Chima was angry with the children because they did not rehearse the Obanibwe that used to be annual. As a result of this, a mock rehearsal of Obanibwe was organized. And immediately this was done, the infantile mortality stopped like magic. That shows the importance of Obanibwe. Now, uh, during Obanibwe festival, the beginning, I said it, is, it lasts for 28 days. That is a whole lunar month. <coughs> the beginning always is uh, with uh, the worship of uh, God of fertility. That is what we call Fajoku. That is the first thing that is done, the first stage. After which, uh, the Obi has to do his uh, uh, ritual, like to remember his forefathers. He has to entertain his uh, royal kinsmen. As a kind, of, a kind of remembrance. Yes, a kind of remembrance. And we that goes by Elochi. She is the personal god of someone. After that, Umwesibe follows. And uh, after Umwesibe, Ipala will do their own. After Ipala, the entire Obio will do the same ceremony. It is all carnival, all entertainment of people to thank God for keeping one alive to see the traditional New Year. Uh, Excuse me, sir. Between this Elochi um, and the Obanibe, yes, we used to hear that there's a period of uh, week of peace where uh, where people have to stay quietly till the, that period is over. Yes, uh, this period of peace is what we are now in. That is the time when the society known as Ebala society uh, prepare themselves. You know in order to be pure so that they can talk to the ancestors that is what we call peace week a banzu they rub all their body with uh, the native uh, uh, white chalk uh, which the chemists call kaolin kaolin naturally is not white it is purified to be white and uh, this inzu is a sign of purity. It's a sign of cleanness. So that when you see somebody smearing the body with uh, nzu, it is an outside right, which is symbolic of internal cleansing. So every place is made clean. The the palace, uh, what we can call, put themselves in a state of grace in order to be holy enough to send message to the spirit of their forefathers. Uh, during this time, no burials take place. No noise, no booming of gone. If somebody dies, the person is not buried until the time is over. So we call it a time of peace. It's a, a time where people at Obio will not go to war with any person. No matter what happened, they cannot be provoked to war. It's a time for truce, truce of peace between you and your God, between you and your fellow man. Uh, this time is uh, a banzu until that uh, a banzu is over. There will be no noise. The palace go into reclusion. They don't come out for about three or four days that is a uh, one native week they are confined and when they come out they come out well trimmed they will uh, march around the town in what we call uh, a mosse after which they will go to this palace for entertainment this is uh, the uh, a banzu of Ipala at the day that that Ibanzu seizes, what we call Ibolunzu, that is 
the day where we have the night carnival of Obanibe for shadowing what will uh, happen the following day, which is uh, the grand finale of Obanibe. Sir, I want to ask, like, uh, what I observed today. Yes. That two days to the festival, uh, two days to the festival, you, the warships, visited uh, the OB in your full regalia. That is the <coughs> half watcher, yes. which are normal people have been known. What is the uh, significance of uh, your visit? Yes, today. Before the palace. Yes, today is uh, the Enaka Ndio Note. Enaka Ndio Note is a renewal of oath of allegiance by the war chiefs to his royal majesty who is their overlord we do that in the morning led by ESA who is uh, the uh, head of uh, the Onut after us after the Onut in the morning the Bala people Bala society the morning the class will come in the afternoon to do the same thing to renew their allegiance the oath of allegiance to the Obi. This is done annually. Uh, who leads uh, the palace? The, the leader of uh, the palace society to the Obi for this particular exercise is uh, our Onisha, who is greeted Ogene. The Onisha of Obio is the, the first among equals in the Bara society. Let us look into uh, what we see and they are called the Ezechima Monument. Yes. Can you just give an insight on that particular spot? Well, Ezechima Monument has been there from time immemorial. It is uh, a monument in memory of Chima and his children. If you go into that particular house where these uh, carvings and moldings are, you will find all the children of Ezra Chima, I mean of uh, Chima, represented there. You will find Obale, that is Obio. You will find Onicha. You will find Ezuzo. Mwifite. You will find Anaba. All these are the sons of Shima. They are all represented in that particular uh, uh, monument. And uh, what is the significance of this monument? The monument was built over the grave of Chima. Because when Chima lived and died in green old age, he was buried in his eba. Eba is the native bed where people sleep on. And it is made of mud. That was a place that was split open and the body of Chima was laid in it. To commemorate that, the new generation of Obio people built a big house over the grave and then molded the... Uh, uh, statue of all the children of Chima in it. That is the is the Chima monument. And uh, if you come to witness Obio Obanibwe, the grand finale, any time at any time in the day when Obanibwe people move to the Chima monument area, that is the high water mark of that particular ceremony. What we can call the pitch. After that, Obanibwe begins to decline until eventually it goes to roost in the bad bush, what we call Oto Obanibwe. Mr. Makwe, yeah. uh, recent time I visited uh, the Ezechima monument yes. and I found an anti-hill. What can you say about the anti-hill? Well, that anti-hill was uh, a miracle of ancient time. 
the grave of Chima, where his grave is, after he was buried, a few days later, the ant hill sprouted from the grave. And that ant hill is still there up to today. And if you listen to our people, when they sing and chant our traditional songs, our folklore stories about Obanibwe, you will hear them, those who have good voice, when they will be calling Chima. So if he is in the ground, that he should raise his head as an anthill. If he is in the sky, he should fly, I mean a flash, like a lightning. And the Chima listened to his children. Because he was on the ground, he sprouted as an anthill. And that anthill is still there up to today. That's wonderful. It's a memory of Chima. As a great man, a traditional mystic, and a great philosopher and leader. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Sir, um, we actually hear that uh, some of the Chima descendants across the Niger, either on the Chamele. Yes. Uh, can you throw light? Yes, it's a Chima people. Some of the communities uh, that uh, are yes. related to. It's a Chima. It's a Chima people are not only on the west side of the Niger. On the west side of the Niger, you have the contiguous Ezechima clan, whose ancestral home is obvious. Within this area too, you have Idumo Zei and Idumo Bio in Ibodo, which is located in a car area. These people left Obio to settle at Ibodo. They are part and parcel of Obio people. Then beyond the Niger, we have Onecha by the riverside. We call it Onecha Mili. Onecha Mili was founded by Oheze, who was a grandchild to Chima and a child to Onecha, the second son of Chima. He left Obio with a group of people in search of greener pasture. They were led to Onecha by way of escort by a gala seafarers, I mean a river boat people who led this uh, uh, and his group to Onecha. They settled at a place called Udo. If you go to Onecha today, that is where <coughs> the king, the Obi of Onecha is crowned. Any Obi that is going to be crowned at Onecha is crowned at Udo. They, when they got to Onecha, Onecha was already peopled by Obeleke people. And these people rushed out to welcome the Ezechima uh, group that had come to live in their midst. They cooked food and entertained them. A lot was eaten. A lot was drunk there. And the people entertained themselves. At the end of the day, the following day, like what you find at Obio, a very big ant hill sprout up at the place where this entertainment was done. And that ant hill is still there at our nature today. And it is the site of the crowning of every Obi of our nature. Uh, we were told that uh, there was uh, an argument at Obio before they left that uh, whoever gets to our nature and was the face to uh, use what we call gong a go -go, to go around the town that that person will be the leader of the group by uh, an art of luck 
or something that was uh, prearranged. It was always that uh, triumphed over even his uh, other group. And these other group were not uh, happy with him. So they decided to run away from Onicha. They, they didn't want to be under his uh, leadership. Somebody like Okwezi was there. Somebody like uh, Esume was there. So they decided to run beyond Onicha. Uh, Okwezi went and they went towards north east and founded Uguta, the place behind a little hill, what we call Ugunta, which has been anglicized now as Uguta. Uh, Esume and group left beyond that and crossed the, the creek of uh, the Niger and founded Abo. So Uguta and Abo are part and parcel of Umu Ezechima, but they are not contiguous with Ezechima clan of uh, Aniocha North. Now that we are in the midst of Obanibwe festival, I want to call on our youths and the integrated totality of all your people to come out a mass to enjoy the Obanibwe Carnival, Obanibwe Festival, for which we are known. There is nothing fetish about Obanibwe. It is a time of remembrance. It's a time of joy. It's a commemoration of the survival of our living group, the present generation of Umuchima. Because if we had been killed, all of us decimated by the Aidu that followed the heels of Chima and his group, we wouldn't have been known today. So because we survived this great war, we kept to this day as a commemoration, a day of remembrance, to remember the day God saved us from the gruesome Aidu that was capable of destroying all of us. But God said no. And we survived it today. And we are keeping our flag, the flag of Chima, flying. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, talking with us is uh, a renowned historian and a chief in Obio, Chief J.N. Egu. Chief Dr. J.N. Egu. Sir, thank you. Yeah. May you live long. May God bless you. Thank you, sir. My name is uh, Akiz Bon Boni Okonko. I'm the National uh, Secretary or College Secretary General of Obio Improvement Union you know, Worldwide. Um, I'm talking about the um, the Okbala and uh, the Olinzele, uh, the chiefs of uh, Obio, the difference and what they stand for. Like in every um, system, in every social uh, setting, people have rules. So the Balas and uh, the, the chiefs, the Ono to chiefs, they fall into our administrative structure. The Balas are the, they are the gentries, the elders of the town. And um, the, secu the UNUT, the chiefs, they double as the ministers and uh, the security chiefs of the town. If you watch, the, we have two set of chiefs, the UNUT chiefs and the palace chiefs. The palace chiefs are like are the personal assistants to the OB, the ones in charge of his dressing, the ones in charge of the courtier, the cha you know, different of them like Oliwe, ECOB, uh, Onob, Chiob, and all those ones, they are palace chiefs. But we have the community uh, warriors, the chiefs, the ministers who are pe uh, um, warriors of the community. They, they are the called, they are called the Ono to chiefs. They are the head of that group who is the highest in, in the rank of a chiefs is the ESA, followed by the Odogu, followed by the Esama, followed by the Oza, and down like that, down the line, we have Owolo, we have um, 
Okulagua, we have a summer, we have a, um, the Haza and the Yungagua. Uh, the people who have then talk about the the Opala, like I said earlier, they are the elders of the town, they are like the senators of the town. They are like the British people will call them the gentry. They are the the gentry. Those ones people mistake um the Opalas and the the the, 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 the the Ono to chief, they call all of them chiefs. Anokbala is not a chief. Anokbala is an elder, just like an elder statesman, like a senator of the land, of the kingdom. So uh, they are not chiefs per se. And that is why um, naturally by our tradition, you cannot become a chief without first of all becoming an Okbala. It is so what we did happening today looks as, as a departure from the real norm. The real thing is that before you become before you become a, a chief, you first of all be an Okbala. The Okbalas are the ones who they call the the the, the, the elder statesmen on our parliament boy Keane. That is they are the people with the highest in rank among the Okbalas, it is called the Onisha. When there is um, a new king is to be enthroned, it is the Onisha that, that, you know, perform the ceremony for the coronation and enthronement of a new uh, monarch. So you can see they are really a distinct class in the community. And um, they are the only people who can, you know, question the position taken by the monarch. The chiefs are that is why the, the 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 chiefs they at the palace they sit at the right hand side of the king then why the the elder the the gentry they eat, sit by the left hand side the and and uh, a chief by tradition cannot oppose a position taken by the king openly but an opala can do that so you can see they are they are really the elders of the community so like um, some people make mistake and refer to the ESO of Obio as um the prime minister no in our own area of course there are communities where the ESA the position of the ESA is I mean the equivalent of the position of a prime minister because he is really the administrative head of the community but in our own our monarch is the administrative head. He presides over the town congress, Izoane, at the town's general assembly. The ESA in Obio is a security chief. He's just like, um, the, like the chief of defense staff of the community. All the function, the only place where ESA presides is in the Onotu. When the Onotu uh, uh, group they are meeting, the Onotu is the security. Uh, council of the of uh, the security the uh, what i call it the the community army they are in charge of ev all matters uh, relating to security so the esl phobia by our own traditional uh, structure um is not a prime minister he does not preside over the community assembly or common it is he only presides when they are sitting the security council is meeting so that is one of the cl i think a clarification i think it is very very important to make yes there are communities where where the ESA plays the role of prime minister like um the, 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 the some of our communities around where the we don't have hereditary monarchy it is the eldest Obala in rank like who somebody who um, is the like in obio and uh, that the position of an Onisha is the, who becomes the king in their own. I, I know very, very well of that. One of our um, uh, um, communities, part of Ezechima, um, on the Chuku, that is the arrangement they have. So, in their own case, you see, before the, somebody becomes an, um, uh, uh, the highest upper line rank, it would have been very, very old. So, most of the time, is a week and so you see the the younger person who is the yes uh, presiding over the the uh, doing most of the administrative work but our own is not like that so the our monarch is the chief executive is i mean he presides over 
He the chief administrative officer, is the chief everything of the community. He just like the only thing is that we have checks. That is why our monarch is not an absolute monarch. So that is much I can say about the Opalas and the the, tra uh, the traditional chiefs. Okay, the issue of um, that people are not um, the people are not uh, uh, coming up to attend the height uh, the position of Opala and the community because they um, it's, a, it's, a, it's it is a matter of wrong interpretation. Some people think that um, when you become an, uh, an Opala is an invitation to quote and unquote what they call idol worshiping because I don't believe in there's anything like idol worshiping. It's just a derogatory, derogatory way of um, classifying our traditional religion. So the first and foremost, and to become an Opala is to become one of the elders of the community, the people who have say in the community. So you can be a Christian and be an Opala. You can be a Muslim, irrespective of your religion. The the Opala thing does not in any way said it is. I mean, I mean, it's exclusively for those who are adherents of uh, our um, our traditional religion. No, an Opala is not forced by any law of the community to worship any god or any goddess so it's something we must get right even when the the day you are being um the, you take the the, the 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 undertake the investiture you are asked things you will like uh, you know what you do where you live in so that they will know those kind of things that they will a kind of they can ask with you that because of your the, the peculiarity of your condition okay like they say an opala does not stay um late into the night you could still be in service and you do night duty you will tell them they will discontinue uh, that this opala that if um peradventure he stays late in the night but as um exigency of his uh, work or uh, his profession I mean, let it not be that he has offended any goddess or any god of the land. You know that kind of a, a thing. So you can be, you could be excused from certain things. You tell them what are your constraints about everything. They only just tell you the norms. But to say that an Opala is forced to worship any um, any god or goddess, it is it is not part of our culture. It's not the truth. Um, basically, the misinterpretation is that. Because at a certain people, at a certain stage, you know, Christianity is still growing. Some persons who, uh, many of the persons who were the uh, uh, Balaz, were adherents of the traditional religion. And people just, you know, erroneously summarized that, yes, it is for uh, people who are not Christians. But I met some uh, Balaz in this community who were christians and they did it in their own christian way and they didn't offend any law of the land and nobody punished them for anything we must bear in mind that at every particular in every particular society at every particular time people must have administrative structure governance structure which by which they manage their affairs so if you there must be leadership them and there must be process of um getting moving up on the on the on, on the uh, social ladder of society it is the same with even the the uh, the level of the state there are people who are civil servants there are people who are members of the state executive council there are people who are the legislature there are structures there are organograms with functions so the upbala position is is the highest that is the highest position any obio man could attend if you are not if you are not um, uh, the monarch of course only one person will be monarch and our monarch is by promogeniture from the father to 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 to, to his heir apparent the son so the every every any other thing the highest next position an obvious man who attend in his lifetime is the high position of an opala which puts him in line of succession to possibly emerge as 
the only share because the only share is the highest the most senior opala in rank so it is it is it is the um the position is political than religion why the religious aspect is that the in our play they feel that the elder of any home is the spiritual is not just the political is the political and spiritual head of the home so that is it by the the, the uh, so those who are saying that um he, i mean if you are not ballad they will say ah which means you are not a christian it's not true um our um, okulewa the immediate the immediate past deputy governor of our state to benjamin Elua, he's a knight of the anglican church but he's an opala in obio and he's also a chief so it is all about service if people are people who lived at a particular time were adherent of a particular religion and they did everything they did in accordance with their religion people of the present generation can also run their society maintaining their institutions and their structures but bringing it in line with their own faith with their own religious uh, belief the important thing is that the community must continue to have administrative structure because it is only through the administrative structure that you'll be able to maintain harmony must be able to maintain peace and order in a community if there is no leadership then this is a clear a direct invitation to anarchy so that is all about this so those who are not um aspiring to be the um uh, um up, uh, not balai, not be, uh, because for the religious reason i mean it is they they are they are really really giving it a wrong interpretation it has not to do and not bala gives you the opportunity to sit in council being an opala gives you the the power the, the the rank to stand up and speak on the the one at the gen, town general assembly and to have say you remember that our people after in everything like in this in the in, um, um, uh, in the dispute resolution because the the town general assembly doubles as a legislative and a judicial council when they when there is a matter to the when they are mediating into a matter at a point they go into caucusing they have to go to you know to go and take um final decision if you are not an opala you cannot participate in that you can you, they will, if you are not an opala they can't send you on as uh, the the the, uh, the emissary of the kingdom to any place so it means you are not part of the leadership you don't have say so that is the uh, what it is yeah you see like with the announcement we made on uh, the the announcement and advertorial of the for, for the festival that we placed on radio and television who said it is a festival it's a commemorative festival it's a festival to commemorate the 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 final and peaceful settlement of Ezechima, the patriarch of all Ezechima communities in this community this was the place where it was from this obvious your community that all the children of Ezechima who went and found different kingdoms today this is their their point of dispersal this is it was where everybody left like we said the festival is a commemorative festival like some other person would have told you this festival started when at a point they said there was according to the the um, um, our um, history and the, the legend the festival was celebrated to mark the final and peaceful settlement of the children of Exechima. yeah so the vista festival will go on of course like any other thing it will have its twists and turns but the, the thing is that the the, the 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 festival is as an identity it's i mean and it has a spirit a, 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 a significance for the community it is not a thing that if you watch the festival you see one thing that will tell you that the festival will come to stay and has come to stay and will continue to be is you look at that the, the, this year and like it has been all over the year night over 80 something percent of the people participating in the festival are youths and so they are still so anything that is in the hands anything that is in the hand of the youth it has a future because the youth uh, is that the future so the festival we, we to, in my view and my understanding it will continue and it can only get better because today we are, t we are talking of how we are going to repackage you know make it 
yeah, I mean a really international um, tourist attraction. There is no festival anywhere around here that lasts for 24 hours. A carnival procession that goes around the community and so peaceful. You, you see, what yesterday we didn't have any policemen or security, but we provide. We are the security for ourselves. Too. It's a festival of love. It's a festival of joy. All that one you see them moving from one community or one compound to the other. It is you know prayers for the community prayers for members of the family prayers for all of your people both home and abroad you know and eating and drinking dining and whining so so something like that is a positive thing in the life of our people and it so we, we cannot help but make it get better so it is a festival to me that we continue it is it is an obvious festival but it is it is it is pan exegema in 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 philosophy you know and orientation because the first time they did the, f the festival was that there was a war this, some historians have told you that was the 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 the, the war that happened in Benin, um, uh, King, um, um the old Bini empire in the then uh, so back to the uh, 11th century you know and they were all these areas were covered were the territories of the empire and there was occasional raid you know on the on the vassal states of the of the empire so at the, there's a particular part of the year that there will be apprehension that they may be, you know people who, who left the empire or the vassal states who want to break away from the they, they, they will raid them so this festival at a point Two, three years going, there was no such trade, and they felt that right, they were, were finally settled peacefully. The man came out, the chima, and some people that were around, they took gun and they sh shoot. They were shooting, you know, in celebration, calling on their people, wherever they are, they should come out, that peace has returned. You know, so that you heard obvious where they're singing, oh, um, Olibongwe is a chima, Onichangwe is a chima, Ebonye no yapo, uh, you know, wherever you are, come out, the peace has returned. So that is about the festival. So it is a thing, it's a cultural heritage that we must maintain, and you can see it, like I said, something in the hands of the youth, something that dominated by youth has a future. So the festival has a future. We can, as well, be improvement union. We are already working and doing everything to make sure that we package it and make it really, really an international. My country. name is uh, Mr. Felix A.K. Uh, rice farming in Obio is as old as Obio itself, to the extent that you cannot mention the name of Obio without rice. In fact, our students, they used to tease them in various secondary schools with uh, obio rice. Uh, here is a typical farm field in the community. Our planting period is normally from uh, March, April to August and September. So rice, our rice is purely uh, on polished rice, brown rice, before the uh, importation of uh, foreign rice, obio rice is known all over. So the extent that the abakaleke rice, half of it is from obio. The rice dealers, as early as June of every year, they are already in obio, buying rice to send to abakaleke for milling. And our rice also has done great to the community. Apart from the commercial uh, and the economic uh, value, it has also helped in, uh, uh, let's say, in our uh, festival mostly. It has contributed and attracted people, visitors to the community. Because before now, rice is not common in every home. But it will be every child is sure of eating rice more than once a year. So for that, during our festival, you see a lot of visitors trooping in in order to have a taste of the rice. 
So it, in other ways, it has helped us in terms of tourism. It has helped people to identify themselves with Obio, most especially during our f New Year festival, the Obanibe festival. This does not mean that uh, uh, Obio produces only rice. No. When to cassava, yam, most especially yam, uh, plantain, even if not of commercial quantity like uh, rice, but we're into other agricultural products. So you're that object left with a rich uh, land for cultivation? Yes, we have a very blessed and uh, fertile land for everything you can cut without even applying fertilizer. God bless the community. My name is Chimere Kwena Benedict. This is the annual festival titled Urbanigbe Festival. And it is usually celebrated once in a year. It is to tell us of what our forefathers, the legacies that have kept for us, continuity. It's very interesting, it's exciting, it's a period of celebration, it's a period of conviviality. In fact, it's a complete fiesta. I will urge you to come around and sit physically for yourself and enjoy the African culture left by our forefathers. Alex Odioko, I'm from Onichubo in Delta State. I am an Ezechima person. This is my first visit to my first video of Obanibobio. It's so peaceful. It's a carnival on its own, very peaceful, very unique, unlike where I come from. In our case, it's rough, we shoot gun, we use cutlasses, we, we do our own under the rains, make everybody go dirty. But it's like a, a very polished and uh, I'm impressed by the thing. Thank you very much. <laughs> My name is Uponno Stadi Makaro. I live with my parents in Asaba. I am eight years old. I am in primary four. I understood that Obanibe Festival is a New Year festival and it is celebrated to remember the founder of what you called Ezechima. I enjoy the festival because it is peaceful and everybody, both strangers, dance and eat together. So I encourage people to attend this annual carnival. Thanks. My name is Onya Princess Michelle. My mom is from Obio and my father is from Asaba. I'm enjoying um, the Urban Bay Festival, which appears to be very fun and with lots of experiences. So far, we've danced and danced and gone around. I've seen places I've never seen before. It's a really thrilling experience. My name is Jidon Sunday Osu. I hear from Obio, a new channel local government area of Delta State. Today, my town, Obio, is celebrating the New Year Festival. And Obanibe is a cultural heritage from our people. It has started not today from our forefathers. And our present people now are sustaining it. And it's all about celebration. An outsider can come for Obanibe Festival and you'll be entertained as if you are from this town. So I want to urge our brothers and sisters far and near who came for this uh, festival to just relax and enjoy themselves because it's all about celebration and happiness and I'm, I'm pleased to be part of this year's uh, Obanibe Festival. Thank you. Hey, 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 hey,